Welcome! Today we will be presenting an overview of the Signature Class 777 seat. We will be covering the function and operation of the seat as well as the furniture. We will also present some maintenance tips on the seat and the furniture. The side arms can be moved up and down by pulling the lever on the side of the arm up and pushing the arm down, releasing the lever to lock in the down position. When the latch is released, the side arm will return to the upright position. The passenger control unit is located on the top of the aisle side arm and operates the following functions, lumbar, backrest, leg rest, and bed. The headrest slides up and down, tilts forward, and the sides fold in and out. The lumbar is operated from the control unit and will move up, down, in, and out. The reading light is turned on and off by pressing the switch on the light head. The telephone is positioned on the non-aisle side arm under the arm cap. The taxi, takeoff, and landing indicator is positioned in the aisle side lower fairing under the side arm. The yellow indicator should be visible when the seat is locked in the forward position and retracted in all other positions. The seat can be swiveled through 90 degrees by pulling up on the lever on the front face of the aisle arm in conjunction with pushing the seat around. The seat can be locked in three positions, forward, 23 degrees, and 90 degrees. The lumbar will operate in all three positions, but the leg rest, back rest, and bed should only operate in the 23 degree position. The leg rest is operated from the control unit and will move up and down and the extension will move in and out. The backrest is operated from the control unit and will move down and up. The bed function on the control unit will take the seat completely flat and the backrest function will bring it back to the upright position. The backrest recline will also take the seat completely flat. The bed operation is shown in real time and takes approximately one minute to move from the upright position to the full bed position and approximately one minute to return to the upright position. There is also a switch on the outboard sidearm that will operate this function. The backrest reclines from 12 degrees to 44 degrees. The legrest raises to a horizontal position. The seat tracks forward from 0 inches to 8.25 inches. 
the backrest reclines to the bed position at 87 degrees. The manual override controls are positioned in the aisle side lower fairing. Raise the sliding flap to gain access to the controls. There is a manual override for the leg rest, back rest, swivel, and tracking. To operate the back rest, manually press down on the back rest lever and move the back. The operation is the same for the leg rest. To operate the swivel, press down on the lever in conjunction with pulling up on the lever on the front of the arm and pushing the seat around. To operate the tracking, press down on the lever in conjunction with pulling the latch and push the seat forward. To move the seat back, press down on the lever and push the seat backwards. Note, the tracking should only be manually moved when the seat is in the 23 degree position. If it is moved in any other position, damage will occur to the taxi takeoff and landing indicator. The seat identification plates are positioned on the rear tube. The ottoman is latched in the down position and will release with an upward load. Push the ottoman down to stow and latch. Opening the lid on the sideboard and pulling the table up using the lip and then folding over accesses the meal table. The table has a leaf that opens and it will slide backwards and forwards. Pushing the video button on top of the sideboard will raise the video monitor. The video monitor will turn through 180 degrees and tilt forwards and backwards. Push the video monitor down to stow and latch. The LifeVest storage is positioned under the sideboard. Pushing the table button on the side of the sideboard will allow the table to slide and the leaf to be opened. The control panel consists of the mood light switch, PC power, audio jack, and phone jack. Pushing down on the privacy screen will release the latch and allow the screen to come up. Push the privacy screen down to stow and latch. The PVP is positioned on the rear screen above the sideboard. The mood light is positioned on the rear screen above the PVP and is operated by the switch on the control panel. The AVUs are located at the front and rear 
of the first class cabin and a structure attached to the AVU screens. Access is gained by turning the quarter turn fasteners and lifting the lid. The furniture identification plates are positioned under the carpet at the rear of the base or plinth. Note, the video monitor and privacy screen do not have to be stowed for taxi, takeoff, and landing, and the FAA has approved this. To remove the passenger control units, first pry the seat ident placard out and then remove the screw. Lift the control panel out of the arm cap. And disconnect the wiring harness. The arm cap is removed by lifting up the rear edge and then sliding the arm cap aft to remove. The lower side fairing is removed by taking out four screws, two in the front face, two in the rear face, and then pulling the fairing down and out. The sidearm is adjusted by backing off the eight screws and then pushing the arm down to realign the two slide assemblies. Then slowly raise the arm, tightening the screws as they become visible. The sidearm lever mechanism is accessed through the top and bottom of the arm. The lever can also be accessed for cable adjustment or replacement by removing four nuts and the bracket. Always check that the nuts that hold the two plungers are secure. To remove the lumbar bladder, first remove the lumbar foam assembly. Disconnect the two tubes to the bladder and remove the two black buttons. The lumbar bladder can now be removed. The headrest is removed by pulling down on its hinges, opening the two slide latches, and then pulling the two buttons while removing the headrest. To adjust the friction on the headrest, tilt and sides, first remove the dress cover and then adjust the screws to the required friction. To remove the reading light, first disconnect the seat belt upper clasp, then remove the backrest dress cover.
and headrest backing plate. Remove two screws and disconnect the wiring harness. The reading light can now be removed. The seat pan can be lifted to gain access to the actuators, control box, micro switches, wiring harness, and cables. First, remove the cushion and then the two screws at the back of the seat pan. At the back of the seat, raise the rear flap and remove two bolts and the two link arms. Raise the seat pan to 45 degrees and disconnect the ground strap. Raise the seat pan to the upright position. The power on-off switch is located at the back of the seat under the rear flap on the right-hand side. Switching the power off and on may clear function problems. The circuit breaker is located on the control box between wiring harnesses. Again, this may clear functional problems by pulling the breaker and then resetting. The swivel latch should move freely and can be lubricated periodically with WD-40. If the swivel latch does not operate, first check that the seat has power. Then check that the mechanical cable is attached and adjusted correctly. If this does not rectify the problem, then it is likely that the micro switch on the side of the swivel pin housing needs adjusting. Loosen two screws and then moving the micro switch at the same time as operating the latch does this adjustment. When the latch operates the pin, retighten the screws, making sure the retaining nuts are also secure, and check the operation. Note, never lubricate the swivel pin, as this will cause it to fail. Contact cleaner can be used to clean the micro switch. Check that the recline, leg rest, and bed functions will only operate when the seat is in the 23 degree position. If they operate in all positions, the micro switch must be adjusted away from the pin. This is achieved by loosening two screws moving the micro switch and re-tightening the screws. The screws and micro switch can only be accessed through the elongated hole in the swivel plate when the seat is locked in the 23 degree position. If the functions do not operate in the 23 degree position, first check that the seat has power, then adjust the micro switch towards the pin. This is a view of the modifications performed by Service Bulletin AA2127. This service bulletin replaces the micro switch located in the base of the seat and the micro switch located on the aft side of the swivel pin with a dual micro switch and proc sensor setup. The forward micro switch in this assembly is wired in series with the proc sensor. This is the element that replaces the base micro switch. Once all work in the base is complete, it is important that the link arm is installed correctly. Installing this upside down can cause damage to the seat pan, the link arm, or the back support arm. Always check that functions are only operating 
in the 23 degree position after any adjustment. The backrest upright and recline position can be adjusted by moving the stops on either end of the actuator. The rod on the actuator can be moved to adjust the position that the leg rest begins to operate. The actuator removal is carried out by disconnecting the wiring harness, ground strap, and override cable. Then remove the two bolts attaching it to the backrest and the pin attaching it to the main frame. The actuator can now be removed. The leg rest, stowed, and horizontal position can be adjusted by moving the stops on either end of the actuator. The rod on the actuator can be moved to adjust the position that the leg rest extension begins to operate. The actuator removal is carried out by disconnecting the wiring harness, ground strap, and override cable. Then remove the two bolts attaching it to the main frame and the pin attaching it to the leg rest. The actuator can now be removed. The seat removal is carried out by first removing the front fairing. Then bend open the tab washers and remove the two bolts from the front of the seat. Remove the rear upper fairing and then track the seat forward to remove the rear lower fairing. Track the seat back three inches and swivel into the forward position to bend open the tab washers and remove the two bolts from the back of the seat. Disconnect the seat power harness, mood light harness, IFE harness and the ground strap. On the center seats, disconnect the proximity light harness. Unfasten cables from the cable support attached to the seat cable spacer and remove the seat cable spacer. Tilt the seat forward and remove cables through the center hole. Lift seat from base or plinth. To remove the seat from the aircraft, recline the backrest to the horizontal position and lock the side arms in the down position. Then turn the seat onto its side and it can be removed between the forward lavatory and galley. Note: The adjustment of the micro switch on the swivel pin and the micro switch in the base is critical to the operation of the seat. It is critical that the micro switch on the swivel pin is adjusted correctly for the seat to swivel. It is also critical that the micro switch in the base is adjusted correctly for the backrest, legrest, and bed functions to operate. 
always check that backrest, legrest, and bed functions only operate in the 23 degree position. The ottoman latches can be adjusted by turning the screws in or out at each end of the latch. To remove the ottoman surround, first remove the seat belt, followed by eight screws from the lower side of the ottoman surround. The ottoman surround can now be removed from between the sideboard and division screen. Lift the ottoman seat, pull the cover back, and remove eight screws. The ottoman seat can now be lifted off. The meal table is removed by taking out six screws from the lower face and lifting the table off. The meal table has a damper on the slide mechanism to control the speed at which it is stowed. The damper is accessed by removing the panel and pulling the table up until the damper is visible through the access hole in the structure. Remove the two screws and the damper can be removed. The release button on the video monitor can be adjusted by removing four screws and the access door. Adjust the length of the rod to remove free play. The release button mechanism can be removed by taking out three screws from the panel. While holding the panel out, remove two screws and the latch bracket by disconnecting it from the rod. Disconnect the circlip on the lower face of the structure below the release button and this can then be pulled from the assembly. The tilt pivot on the monitor can be adjusted by removing four screws and the end cover. Tightening the nut until monitor will not move under its own inertia in the horizontal axis. The rotation pivot on the monitor can be adjusted through the access door. Tighten the nut until the monitor will not move under its own inertia in the vertical axis. Remove four screws below the video monitor and lifting the assembly up accesses the gas strut. The life vest stowage is removed by taking out five screws. The release button on the side table can be adjusted by removing four screws and the electrical access door. Adjust the length of the rod to remove the free play. The side table is removed by taking out eight screws from the lower face of the structure and lifting the table off. The control panel is removed by taking out two screws in the front face and pulling the panel out. The wiring harnesses need to be disconnected before it can be removed completely. The privacy screen latch mechanism can be adjusted by removing 13 screws and the panel from any sideboard in row D. The latch and bracket can be accessed through a hole in the structure. To adjust the mechanism, loosen the two screws on the bracket and lower the privacy screen until latched. Retighten the screws and test operation. Removing four screws and the door accesses the gas strut. The gas strut is removed by taking off the circlip and screw from each end and pulling away from the assembly. The PVP can be removed by taking out four screws 
and the PVP fascia. Remove four screws and the support bracket complete with the PVP and disconnect the wiring harness. Remove four screws and separate PVP from support bracket. Removing two screws and the lens can access the mood light. Remove two screws, disconnect the wiring harness, and the mood light can be removed. The eyebrows are removed by carefully lifting the top half from the non-aisle side and then sliding the eyebrow from the keyhole slot on the aisle side. The lower part of the eyebrow is removed by taking out two screws and lifting it off. The vertical end finisher is removed by taking out one screw from the top and one screw from the bottom. Then apply moderate heat to the vertical end finisher to break the bond with the screen and then pull the vertical end finisher from the screen. Note, too much heat will damage the screen and trim. These views show how the components are situated at the rear of the sideboard. Remove PVP fascia four screws PVP rear fairing, three screws. And PVP front fairing, two screws. Remove electrical access panel, four screws, and monitor latch access door, four screws. Disconnect all wiring harnesses, remove three screws that attach the upper edge of the sideboard to the front and rear of screens. Lift carpet along sideboard and remove six screws that attach sideboard to base or plinth. Lift sideboard carefully out, making sure everything is disconnected. With sideboard removed, disconnect all wiring harnesses. Remove two screws and the PVP fairing from the rear of the screen and one screw that attaches the sideboard to the rear of the screen. Remove trim strip six screws and four bolts that attach the screen to the plinth. Lift screen carefully out making sure everything is disconnected. And there you have it. Basic overview and understanding of the 777 Signature Class Seat. With this information, you should be able to use it to keep the seat and furniture in service for hours to come and keep our passengers satisfied. Note, this video is for training purposes only and you should always refer to the IPC Addendum and American Airlines documentation for final authority. The following component maintenance manuals are available from the Tulsa Technical Library. 25-22-28 Signature First Class Seat Assembly M18101-001 25-22-31 Signature First Class Cabin Assembly P10400 dash zero zero one.